Ceiling Unlimited. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. This radio show is brought to you by the men and women of Lockheed and Vega. Stand by. Hello. Hello. Welcome from the Gesellschaft. Hello. Hello. Hauptstation in Berlin. Ich bedauere, aber ich darf nicht mehr Deutsch sprechen. Operator 23. This is Operator 23. I won't speak German now. We can speak here. I'm speaking from the United States, Burbank, California State. Hello. Hello. This is Operative 23. I hope you are hearing this. This is Secret Agent 23. I'm inside an American war plant. One of America's greatest aircraft manufacturers. The Vega plant. Vega. M as a worker disguised. This secret broadcast is made through concealed microphone worn on lapel, cleverly concealed behind Vega workers' identification badge. On my coat is a microphone into which I'm speaking. Through this, I shall my mission carry out to inform you from their source, facts and data of American production of aircraft. The Heil. A German soldier salutes his respected superiors. Secret Agent 23, making secret broadcasts from American war plans. Jackson, that cat's groovy as a two-cent movie. Solid girl, solid. He digs that melodive that sends me. You can say that again. When his boots are laced, he really jumps. Beat me, Daddy. Tell me more. Hello, hello, Hauptstation. Deutsche Rundfunkgesellschaft. Operative 23, making secret broadcast. The voice has just heard were those of American slaves. Uh, translation, impossible. Uh, obviously, code information to be kept secret from guards or a foreman, as here they are called, uh, will obtain precise German form for a groovy as a two cent movie. Uh, also, uh, he that mellow jive dicks, murder, etc. Hello, Berlin. I'm in through. Watch your feet. This code language before heard clear indication that morale is low. At any moment now, democracy will break down. How otherwise? Men and women without regard for racial purity sit together here, working unguarded. From where should necessary obedience come when discipline is here so missing that slave just passing me purposelessly to himself as he works, whistles and sings? <laughs> Blueprints, Captain Officer. Keep contact, please. Yes, who is it? Uh, John Smith, employee. I've been sent for the blueprints, Come please. in. Hello. Excuse, please. I'm in the wrong place. You certainly are, Fritz. You should have stood in Berlin. I'd like you to meet some friends of mine. How do you do? FBI, Mr. Schmidt. And John... <coughs> FBI? Excuse, please, what is cooking? We're going to have to take you along with us. Hello, hello, Hauptstation, Deutsche Rundfunkgesellschaft. Hello, Max, hello, Hermann, hello, Leutnant Obermeier. Somebody, is it for Sorry, me? Fritz, the we'll take over side. now. I'll relieve you of that microphone. Is here a mistake? Come on, Schmidt. Hello, hello, Hauptstation, hello, Berlin, hello, Tokyo, hello, Axis. Your secret operative, 23, didn't know it, but his secret broadcast had a coast-to-coast -coast hookup. CBS, to be exact, on the Lockheed and Vega program. Don't worry. There are no spies at Lockheed or Vega. We see to that. For your information was all arranged. We thought our listeners might be amused. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. If you don't mind, we're going to stay right on Fritz's private beam to Berlin. Fritz came here to the Vega plant looking for secrets. His boss wants to find out about American planes. What's in them? What's the secret of their success? Axis listeners, come with me. We'll continue Dry und Schwanzig's tour of the Vega assembly line. You want secrets? There's some American workers. What was it Fritz called them? Slaves. Maybe they'll tell us how it's done, what it's done with, and why. Here we are to drill press. Here's a typical American slave. Let's see what she has to say about it. Hello there. Uh, maybe you can tell us why you work here. Doing what I can to win the war. Naturally, we all are. The way I figure it, the more of us we can get to work, the more planes we can get. <laughs> Let's hear from this lady over here. She seems to be pounding rivets into something or other. I don't know if she can hear us or not with all this racket. Better listen with both ears. Uh, pardon me. I 
Beg your pardon, I don't want to slow up production, but just what is it you're putting into this plane? I'm paying back. A little closer to the microphone, please. That's better. I'm paying back in rivets. Double for every bullet they put into my Joe. Your husband was killed in combat? He wasn't my husband, but he was going to be. I see. Yeah, and I can match their machine guns any time with this hammer. Nazis, listen to this. We're in the plastics department now. You know something about plastics. You helped develop them. You also developed an ally in Italy, plastics and Italians. Watch what we do with them in America, Mr. Crano. I have just a minute of your time, please. Only a minute, Mr. This is Mr. Vincenti Crano. About your work, Mr. Crano, an Italian working in an American aircraft factory making bombers to destroy the Axis. Something worth talking about. Will you tell our listeners what you did in Italy before you came here? Uh, I was a sculptor. Now you're using that talent to make molds for castings. Well, it's not quite the same, but in a way it is. Do you have a family, Mr. Crano? Oh, yes, eight children. Four of my boys are fighting for Uncle Sam. Fighting against Italy, Mr. Crano? Oh, not against Italy. They are fighting for the freedom of Italy. When we win, Italy will be free again. So you're satisfied making molds? Oh, I'm very happy with my work. Yes, I feel I'm really accomplishing something. I'm proud to be part of all this. Mr. Crano, is there any secret to the way you're making molds? What do you add that makes your castings better than those produced by the Axis? As you say, Mr. Wells, that's a secret. <laughs> I see. You like your work, though. Oh, yes, I like my work very much. Thank you. Hello, fascists. Are you still listening? You learning what goes into our American planes? Here's a very busy young lady over here. You might like to hear from her. She seems to be somebody. Can we get through here, please? Yeah, sure. Pardon, watch the mic cable. Right. That's it. We'll get in here as close as we can. This goes to A23 production. Uh, this one goes over to engine say assembly. Have you a minute, please. Hold it, buddy. Just a second, please. Joe, rush these half-inch couplings okay. to engine assembly. Hurry it up. Uh, this is a broadcast. Buddy, I'm awfully busy. This shipment of 1170s goes to maintenance. They came in 20 minutes ago. Okay, I'll rush it. All right, what's on your mind? No, no, those panels have to go to I, sandblast. I wish first. you'd tell us what you put into your planes. Uh, I'm an expediter, mister. I put the right parts in the right places at the right time. I hey, see. look, if Meyer doesn't get those gaskets, he'll have kittens, and Vago have no exhaust manifolds. Oh, sure. Don't mind me. I don't. These go to 207. Step on it. Shoot these over to the lab for stress test. <laughs> Oh, over here's the right wing assembly. I know, Berlin, you want secrets. You want the device or the design that makes our wings more durable than yours. You've noticed ours don't drop off in a 500-mile-an-hour dive. Maybe it's something we put inside those wings. Take the microphone off this ladder and get a look at what goes on inside. Stand by. Now then, on top of a 10-foot ladder, you can see down inside the long tunnel, rather flat egg-shaped tunnel, to the inside of the right wing, outside along its smooth, streamlined surface. A lot of young women are diligently inserting rivets, inspecting seams, and rapidly molding the great structure. Inside it's dark, cramped, maybe. Maybe the secret's inside here. I think I see a workman down there, crouched down there in the narrow space. Uh, try and find out what he's doing. Hello in there. Can we speak to you a minute? Okay. From the size of the voice and the size of the quarters, I think you're about to hear from one of the many... Midgets, one of the many little people employed in our American aircraft factories. Oh, here we are. Uh, could you tell us what goes into the making of a wing like this one besides metals and craftsmanship? You mean designs and all like What that? I mean is the spirit of the thing. For instance, how do you like working all cooped up in that very cramped space in there? How do I like it? It's the greatest thing that ever happened. In what way? Well, heck, before, we little people had nothing to do but be funny in circuses and things like that. But now it comes along a job that nobody else can do but us. A larger man couldn't get inside one of those wings, could he? They tried it. Why, it's even tough for me. But I'm not squawking. I like it. Good for you. I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye now. We're on our way up to the main control panel assembly, and here they attach fine wires to delicate instruments. The eyes and the ears of the plane. This young lady, for instance. She'll stop those nimble fingers of hers for just a minute. Maybe she'll answer a question or two. Uh, excuse me, miss. Yes? Uh, would you be so kind as to tell our listeners what it is you do? I, uh, connect wires onto the terminals of bomber control panels. How do you know which wire goes into which terminal? By the length and the size. Of each wire? Yes. How'd you have to get into your line of work? I wrote out the regular application. Now what was your real reason for wanting to work? Reason? Well, I guess... I guess I just wanted to prove something. Prove what? Well, I guess 
Just prove that I can wire terminals as well as other people. You're blind, aren't you? Yes. Thank you very much. And I'm not afraid anymore, either. Over here, we have a white-haired grandmother who used to teach school. Hello, Mrs. Hill. Hello. Mrs. Hill is assembling ventilator panels. See this? It's going to Alaska. This is the way it works. You pull a lever, and these louvers will close and keep the cold air away from our boys lying up there. We've been hearing from a lot of women here at Vega. Over 75% of the new employees here are women. Teresa Turner is very proud of her toolkit. Teresa used to be a hairdresser. Now she operates a drill press. And Priscilla Ori, her husband and father, were both taken prisoners in Bataan. Priscilla works a spot welding machine. The machine is never silent. Next sportswoman works beside her. She has a villa in Tahiti. Sends her paychecks to the Red Cross. Over in engineering, you'll find Marion Chu Yang Lo, pale Chinese silks. Marion does blueprints for machine gun mounts. Right here in front of me, two sisters whose parents were born in Norway are sorting and distributing electric wires. Next to them is a Negro with gray hair, a girl with an Irish brogue, born in County Mayo. The woman next to her is Greek. All the races in the world are here. You wouldn't like that, Germany. All the races and every sort of person, they all work together, insist on working. Deaf people, they found a job here they can do. People who can't speak, blind people, people with money who don't have to work at all. People, we're outside now. Our address, the Vega Aircraft Plant, Burbank, California, United States of America, United Nations of the World. Axis listeners, are you listening? We're broadcasting from the giant runway that sends our planes to you. Can you hear them? Wait a minute, we'll move the mic a little closer. Listen, fascists, if you aren't, you're hearing another plane just like this plane right now. Many planes just like this one right now. In a week or less, you'll meet this one in person. Some of you will somewhere on your side of the world. The shady side where you're still holding out against the future. Want secrets? Secrets? Here's the real one. You'd never guess it in a million years. Make it two million. Listen. Something in there, all right, isn't there? Well, I'll tell you what. It's people. That's the answer. People. Free people. You can hear the difference. That's Joe and Fred. That's Hedy and Peggy and Jose, Olga and Mary Jane. Ivan and Giovanni, Abby and Paddy. Shorty, Chubby and Slim, Lefty and Blondie and Billy the Mid. They're all in that motor, hear them? Their laughter is in that plane. Their free laughter. Their fine, clean anger. Their dream of the future. Fascists, little people are the big secret. Beautiful, wonderful, plain, ordinary people. They're the secret of victory. The men and women of democracy. Just heard Orson Welles in a program presented by the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporations of Burbank, California. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.
You know, I think some of us are rather glad that those days before Christmas are over. It was pretty hectic, wasn't it? Well, then you can sympathize with Amos and Andy. For them, Christmas is still coming. So let's just see how they're standing up under the strain. 